Welcome everyone to Flow Volleyball's first ever Facebook Live interview. I am personally very, very excited for this guest. This is my former Penn State teammate, who I haven't seen in some time, so I'm really pumped to catch up. Yeah, and you guys may have seen her this past week at the Norseka Pan Am Cup. She put on a spectacular show. She was the best setter and the MVP of the tournament with 31 aces. And of course, we're talking about Micah Hancock. Micah, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Good to be here. Yes. So back from Peru, back in the States, are you sleep deprived? Are you feeling good? How are you? <laughs> um, yeah, we feel a lot better being in America. Um, it's, it's always challenging to be out of the country and um, compete, but it's also really fun. So we're just trying to enjoy our short period of time we have now, um, just being in the USA gym. Right. So tell us, what was Peru like? Um, I mean, South America, it's tough. You know, like we were supposed to be in Lima, Mm -hmm. Peru that's where the the competition was held and then we find out we're in like a San Diego kind of thing which is obviously not to the equivalent of San Diego um in Kenyatta mm -hmm. and we were supposed to okay we were thinking we win out the the pool like if all goes well and we go to Lima for the last two games right and then we we hear that we have to stay in Kenyatta the whole time so the whole team was like are you kidding me you know like we dealt with it pretty well but it was just it was difficult because it's, it was Really, you know, it was a difficult area to be. You can't really go outside. You can't drink the water. You can't have, you know, fresh vegetables. So it was just, and there were dogs running around everywhere. Mm. And we were always joking, like, un perro, like, you know, like <laughs> trying to speak some Spanish. But, like, the one word yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. Like, hola. And then it's like, you know, but pretty selective Spanish. <laughs> I think I saw a few posts of carb diet of fries. And so that was yeah. the safest thing you guys could be eating. Yeah, well, and uh, some of us got sick, so I was actually one of the lucky ones. Um, I got a little bug, and I'm still trying to get rid of it as we leave for China on Monday. So it's like um, just trying to keep like your sleep schedule, you know, like your diet in check, and like still feeling good on the court. So it's definitely different from like college and other professional stuff because you're always traveling out of your own country. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you were on the Pan Am Cup roster last year. How was this yeah. year different from last year? Um, I think everyone just, we had more experience in general. We had um, two older girls and even the the younger girls like me and, you know, myself and other people, we had another year under our belt. So we had some experience with it. Um, so I think that helped a lot. But I think we, the girls who were at the last year's was like, okay, the bronze that was kind of like her saying this year's bronze is not the new gold. So we wanted mm -hmm. to get the gold and, you know, we kind of set out to do that this year. Definitely. And so we, we talk a lot, you know, this, everybody talks about your surf, right? It's like your staple. <laughs> does, this, does, it get, does it get old for you hearing that all the time? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, sometimes it does. Right, because there's so much more to your game. Right. And so yeah. it's almost like, come on guys, there's more to it, but you, you have to acknowledge, I mean, you, we're, we're every time we're watching more and more aces and 31 aces this tournament I mean let's talk about like your confidence back there um well it's it's crazy because I feel like sometimes people assume that I'm super confident you know right. and I, I go through sums just like every other server so and I and I feel I'm like hypersensitive to it because I get you know I'm on the spectrum of like, oh, you have so many aces. And then like when I'm not serving well, it's like, Big oh, Micah served bad, you know? So yeah, it's like both spectrums of like, uh, but, um, yeah, I think my confidence has a lot to do with how I can like come out and perform just mm -hmm. because I've done it for so long. And I've, um, I don't know, I, the reps and just the mindset of like, okay, if it's a good toss, you go for it. Right. And like, yeah, sometimes you're going to miss hit the ball, but that's just how it is. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just trying to get more consistent even at this level. It's just fighting that consistency. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, fun story I love to tell about when you remember back at Penn State, your first match ever when we were playing against USC. And I think that was like the moment when it clicked for yeah. you. And we were, I think it was, we were the two seed and USC was the one seed and we had them in rec hall and we were running a different offense and that was your debut. And you just come in and immediately serving right off the bat and, you know, as your as your old teammate, it's so exciting to still watch you still at this level still have that and not be like such a great staple to your game. It's really fun to watch. Always a fun story to look back on. 
Yeah, no, it's cool that you said that. I, like, got chills because, like, that was one of the biggest games I felt like of my career just Mm -hmm. because, you know, we weren't really expected to come out. And after, like, you know, the first game was Oregon and we didn't show up like we could have, you know, and the spirits were low and I thought it was just a really – it was a really fun game and, like, people stormed the court and it was just – it was a really cool – a really cool game for my yep. my lifespan i think no definitely and it was one that lineup changed quickly that next day after oregon and then <laughs> boom you're thrown in and i remember everybody was being moved around and really cool to see the development yeah katie and yeah. i were joking thank about you 31 aces this year last year 50 aces we're like man what happened <laughs> only 30 right but that's yeah. part of what you're saying is like all of a sudden you got 31 this year and people are like oh well what happened it's to not th- even th- good <laughs> right and that i mean it's that's funny because not- i mean i do feel that way myself i'm like you know i could have gotten i could have beat the record you know versus i'm still putting a lot of teams out of system and i'm still making points so the biggest thing for me is to mentally be like okay this is still good, but I need to focus on out of system is like the ultimate goal versus straight points, right. you know? Mm-hmm. So, yep, definitely. And you know, one thing that's interesting while we're on the serving topic, not just about your serve, but I've noticed in the USA gym, like you had Nicole Fawcett who had an awesome top spin serve. She comes to USA and they have her moving to a jump float serve or someone like Jordan Larson, you know, they were known for these awesome power serves. And now here you are still being able to do it. Has there been any talk of changing you out of a top spin, or is it doing well? They want to keep you going with that. Um, so right as of now, it is like I'm still like letting it rip. Mm-hmm. But there, I mean, there's, there's, I, I knew that coming in. Like I was aware, you know, Nicole Fassett went to my school, so I'm like, all right, yeah, I, I, I know her arm pretty well. It's good. Um, so I was always kind of ready for that if they wanted to go that route because I mean I like to serve in general. Right. So the float serve is not a huge thing. It's just, it's kind of who I've become now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would be a little like, you know, sad for me to let it go. But I also think like if that had to come to it, like if I was no longer getting aces or if I wasn't getting people out of system, then I would think, okay, if this is not helping the team, then what am I doing it for? So um, yeah, as of now, it's like it's consistent enough that it's helping us more than it's hurting. So they're just letting me rip it. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, and is that true in your overseas league in Poland as well that your serve is super effective there? Yeah, I think I did see like, you know, as time goes on, people understand that I have the curve. So if I'm not like really hot on the ball, they have more control over what I'm, you know, addition. So I think it's a part of my game too is getting different shots. So, you know, going down the line and chopping the ball short so because they get so deep, you know, just having kind of a repertoire of what I can do definitely will help that consistency stay up. Mm-hmm. Now, really interesting dynamic. I think what's so fun for so many fans to watch this USA team right now is you have all these NCAA stars. It's a very young team now making their debut on the national team or max a couple months experience on the USA team. What's it been like the chemistry on the team gelling with these girls that you competed again so heavily in college um it's really funny like i think it's a great experience it's really cool to get to know people that you know you've thought were the enemy for so many years (laughs) but um yeah it's funny my mom texts me and she's like it's so weird to see like all big 10 girls on the team and i'm like but it's it's awesome because it speaks for the conference you know and it also speaks for the talent you know so it's it's just really cool uh to compete and get to know players on like a interpersonal level and what they need and how they play and not just oh hey she has a heavy arm she likes to hit this shot you know so it's pretty fun not the way you studied them in scouting reports right is there anybody that totally surprises you that isn't what you expected maybe personality or just in the gym training with them no one really comes to mind it's I think the most the the person that comes to mind is Inky Mm -hmm. Ajanaku Mm -hmm. but it's funny because I've known her for a while and, you know, she's from Oklahoma. Um, I play with her sister some, but just that she's so, she's so intense, but she's such a goofball off the court. Mm-hmm. And it's just a great, it's a great thing to be around because it keeps everyone's spirits high and it's just, it's a really cool thing to see. Definitely. Yeah. And one of the big discussions around the tournament this past week was the two setters. You know, what, what's it like? You were compared to Lauren Carlini so much during college. You guys played against each other so many times. What's it like to be with her on the court now? It's really cool. I mean, and I think people don't 
people don't expect it to be that way and it's a shame honestly you know uh, I respect her and her talent and she's a great teammate you know and I think we have that mutually so it's really cool to get into the gym with someone like I said and it was kind of like an like an enemy thing just because you're playing each other but I've always been the player that has mutual respect like if someone's kicking our butt it's like all right well there's a reason doesn't mean we can't do a better job but kudos to them still you know so um it's been fun it's um it's a it's a difficult dynamic sometimes when you're coming in and out and who's starting and who doesn't but I also think that that can change at any time so I think just being a good teammate and being solid and consistent with that is is really important in this gym definitely and um one interesting thing I've noticed watching you guys play is especially in this past tournament with timeouts they take you have, it looks like you have certain coaches coaching each position, and you have the position separate in a timeout. You don't get to work as much maybe in that timeout with the hitters that you're hitting. It's very, you know, setters are with setters. You and Lauren are off. Hitters are with hitters, and that's kind of how it is. Tell, talk to us about that dynamic in the timeouts. Um, I like it, you know. Um, it's, it is different because I've never done that before. But I do like it because the setters, you know, we have our coach, and we know what's going on. We know what we need to do, and it's like – Lauren were to see something or if I were to see something we were off we could tell each other hey like that was a good set to so-and-so remind her to do this or hey tell so-and-so she can tip you know so it was it was cool position work and then like sometimes if something got a little haywire or we needed as a team everyone needed to hear it Karch would pull us all in you know so everyone could hear it but so far I've really enjoyed that position work off the court because I just feel like the turnover is so much faster when we get back on the court we know what to do and we're not, you know, chaotic about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something really interesting about the USA gym environment is you don't really know necessarily what hitters you're going to be competing with in an upcoming tournament. So as a setter, how do you develop setter-hitter connection when you aren't sure who you're going to be playing with the next week? It, you know, it's difficult because sometimes it's overwhelming. You are in the gym, and I'm still new to this, so I don't mean to sound like I know what's going on all the time. But, uh, yeah, I think we just had a setter meeting yesterday for this China trip that's going to be three and a half weeks long, and I was just telling Carly, the girls I set at Pan Am, what they seem to do well with the balls I gave them and if they need it higher or if they do well with a faster ball. And then she would do the same for me with the home training group. So I think setters really try, as we're trying to lead together, and when we're the only ones on the court, we have to have really good open communication to, like, who needs what just so that – when they are setting them, they know that, okay, Micah said this, and maybe it's just an extra click they need, you know, to have a better connection with someone. Yeah. In in this past tournament, who were some players maybe across the net that really caught your attention that maybe USA fans aren't as familiar with? Some players, like you talked about, that maybe had a great game that really demanded your respect, and who caught your eye in this past tournament? Um, I really like the Dominican libero. Mm -hmm. She is just, I think her name's Brenda. Uh, I'm unsure of her last name, Castillo, mm -hmm. I think, Castillo, but she yeah. is like Was this the purple hair? Ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You the can't weird. miss her. Yeah. <laughs> can't miss her. Yep. Yeah. But she just covers everything and she gives her little body like, you know, the 100% that it has. So mm -hmm. it, it's really cool to watch her and just she directs everything and she communicates. And then she's also making these crazy plays. You're like, like literally during the match, I'm pretty sure I was like, how did she do that? And I was like, oh, yeah, I have to set this ball. But <laughs> It's just amazing plays, honestly. Definitely. Yeah, leave it to the setter to pick the libero as the one that caught her eye. I feel like everybody yeah. else would be like, oh, that girl from Cuba that had the most points in the entire tournament. Nope, you're looking at the libero. I love it. Mike yeah, is, Mike no, is and, bring the defense. Yeah, right? No, but I, it's, it's sad, though, because, because we were so split, we never got to even see the other pool. Right, because they're two so different locations. I didn't, yeah, we didn't see Dominican until the day before. We're like, oh, yeah, we have to play these Amazon women. Like, mm -hmm. they're humongous. But it was a good challenge. Did USA have anybody over there scouting during those matches at the other location? I do not think so. I think right. we just used film, and they would just watch film, and we would, you know, you know how that scouting stuff goes. They like yeah. to call each other up and be like, you want to change film? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> yep. So now you're back in... In the USA gym, what does it look like right now in terms of trying to make the roster for the Grand Prix? How does that process work with everybody? Um, so Grand Prix rosters came out mm -hmm. yesterday or two days ago at 2 okay. p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, you know, I'm not really sure of the whole process. It's really just um, you're in the gym, you know, and you 
hope to get picked to travel and you you know if so pan am was kind of like a let's see how the younger girls do and whoever performs well or if they wanted to rotate players you know it 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 really just depends on what the coaching staff is looking for for that tournament and what they think we need a little more than something else even if you're doing something really good Mm -hmm. you know so i think i think a big thing for younger players is to keep their mindset as okay I'm gonna keep getting a one percent better every day versus like oh I didn't make that roster you know and I was fully ready to become like you know be in the gym and really earn a spot and I'm obviously still willing to do that but I just sometimes I worry that like people take it really hard and as they should you're supposed to be passionate but it's also it's it's very difficult to get like the hey we're not going to take you on this trip but we still want you in the gym and Mm -hmm. you have to kind of like see how people react to that and like use that to fuel the motivation you know so it's a it's a really it's a difficult dynamic at times but I think no one in this gym is trying to you know hide or the the coach is very up front you know the coaching staff is very up front hey you can work on this hey you can get better at this and we're taking you you know and maybe it's not like we're taking you for your heavy arm but you know like there are reasons why they take you yeah, that's such a good point you make. It's almost there's got to be a maturity in the USA gym of not getting too high on the highs that you maybe made this roster, or getting too low on the lows. Hey, you're going to sit behind on this trip, and exactly, it's a long grind these four years. Definitely. Yeah, it's a marathon. I think a lot of USA fans can need a little bit of a reality check on that front too. Like it's so early in the quad, we had a lot of people commenting throughout this tournament, like, "Oh, this particular person is on this roster, and." I don't know that they should be or like where is this person you know it's the first year of a four-year quad mm. it's obviously a very young team that went to pan am games and or pan am cup so there's just a very long way to go and if you don't make this roster there's plenty of chance to make them in the future and there's just exactly. a long way to go <laughs> well and people don't understand then this is one thing i would tell like i tell my mom this like even if i weren't making rosters like we don't even know like how so how would people make you know like assumptions or the hey they have these ideas when we have no idea when we make the roster or not until the email comes out you know so it's 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 all up in the air really and you just try to deal with it the best you can whether it's you know the best news you've ever gotten or maybe it's not but you have to kind of keep it at this steady emotional level right and that's something to talk about so that's how you guys find out you get you get an email yeah and then i think yeah, that okay. was like that wasn't necessarily the I guess the only way they were doing it. They did for a while like have a meeting and mm-hmm. then I think it was a little too emotional like and as women, you know, yep. we kind of tend to let that fly. So, I think as the team last year before Rio, I think they were really honing in on like let's just get an email so we have some personal time to deal with it mm-hmm. and then we can come back in the gym and handle it like we want, you know. So, that's that's really smart. Get the time to yourself if you're going to have a strong emotional reaction, especially, I mean, with Rio, like, that's going to be the yeah. – for that, that is some of the worst news as an athlete can deliver if they're not going to the Olympics. Right. That's a smart – here's the news, swallow it, come back once you've thought it through. Right. That's awesome. So now just talking broad picture now, what is would you say is the difference of maybe your pro career in Poland versus the USA gym? What is the training like your day to day look like differently than overseas pro versus USA? Um Yeah, the training's quite different. I think I mean even to down to the weightlifting. The weightlifting is we do six exercises and we do like three sets, but after each like set of reps, you take like 2 minutes off mm-hmm. or you're supposed to. And this is in Poland. You know, yeah, and, like, as Americans, like, th- this is a – I think that's a widely known thing for American players. We're ready to, like, go. You know, we want to bust out the lift. We want to feel explosive. We want to feel like we're getting better so we can go, like, be good in the gym. Um, but I think it's just, like, a – they like to go slow and they like to talk and during reps, and we just kind of want to get it done and go home. Um, but so that was kind of weird. And then – yeah, like in USA, it's like we we know what we're doing. We get in, we get out, we do, you know, our form of cardio, which he doesn't like to call it cardio, but <laughs> it kind of is. Um, but, yeah, it's just like much faster based and, like, I just feel way more dynamic. Like the training is so much more dynamic. And, I mean, the 
the court stuff is less, you know, we're not hitting off boxes. We're not getting like, like we still will get like serving reps or passing reps or setting reps, but we're not doing reps off a box. Mm -hmm. You know, even we, we did that in college, you know, but, um, they still do that in Poland, you know, and like, I'm sure Italy, I, I haven't been there as much and like other teams internationally, I feel like it's more about a certain skill versus let's see the game. I think that's the biggest thing in USA that I've really taken a hold of is if I can watch the right things for longer, I can slow the game down. So I'm right. in a better spot. I'm making better plays versus getting caught up in the ball and then not really knowing how to react. So mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. So, and what about your emotional transition from being a college player into being a pro living on your own? What was that like? Uh, it was, it was a difficult time. Like I, graduated in three and a half years and went straight to Italy because you know I was ready to big gun it you know I was super excited about it and I really had no idea what international volleyball like European volleyball was like um and I get to Italy and I'm expecting to be like the starting setter and to just go kill it and I'm like wow this volleyball is nothing like I've been playing you know like Mm -hmm. I have to set a high ball perfectly to the pin Mm -hmm. and I'm like I I would literally set the ball and the ball would just like float and I'm like okay this is how this is going to go. So, you know, it was Very just a different. lot of, yeah, and just a lot of adjustment. So um, I think emotionally, like mentally, it was like coming back to, it's kind of like college. You have to climb the ladder. Every year you get a little better at it. And by senior year, you know you know what the heck's going on, mm-hmm. you know, and you can start helping people. But I think also in pro, you can't always have those four years to, re, like, you know, to adjust. So it's just kind of like learning on the fly and, um, competing as hard as you can every time I'm on the floor, which, you know, I try to do that all the time, but yep. yeah, it was, it wasn't the, it wasn't the best situation out of college for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I, I finished in Puerto Rico and I, I like felt like I could lead the team. I felt like I was more in my element and it's just, yeah, it's like coming to a realization of like, okay, there's a lot of women in this sport and they're very good at it. And just realizing, you know, you have to work work back up the ladder like you did when you were when you were younger going into college so it was it was a big adjustment but it's it's worked out so far with that mindset for me I think from everybody I've talked to everybody says that first year is the toughest that transition year so have you made is it true Italy is the next spot you'll be playing yeah I'm gonna be playing in Monza Italy with uh, Tori Dixon's going as well nice that's awesome someone you've already been training with right awesome and so one thing, one good question we've thought of is now, you know, with it being Rio was last summer, you have a lot of young people in the gym. Is the mindset with the players right now, there are certain holes to fill within the roster or is it just very, like you have certain players retiring, right? Like Courtney Thompson is retired. Chris D'Armato is retired. These players that have made it known they are done. Does everybody, there's certain spots that everyone's gunning for, or does it feel like every spot is open, everyone's competing for every spot at this point in the first year of the quad? I mean, I get the feel that it's both. Mm-hmm. Like, I, obviously, people want to to get a starting spot, you know, but they also have people like Jordan Larson coming back in the gym. Mm. So yeah. it's like you would expect her to be on the floor in four years if she's if she's up to it, you know, right. so... Um, I think it's people want to people still are driven to get a spot. But I also think in the back of some minds, it's like, all right, well, even in four years, if you know, and that's the thing, too, is they don't know where they're going to be in four years. So more power to anybody, everybody. Right. But, you know, it's just like I'm sure people have the thoughts of, OK, like Falouk's here, Rachel's back, Jordan's back, Kelsey Robinson, Kim Hill, you know, Alicia Glass, possibly, you know, if she. Right. Has her, baby. has her baby and wants to come back like more power to her she's healthy enough to do it let's do it right so yeah it's definitely i think you think about it but i don't know if it's really stopping anyone from trying right to take it you know it's early enough for everybody to be guns blazing at this point yeah if i right. think back to the beginning of the last quad i mean we probably wouldn't have thought of Carsta Lowe or kim hill or some of the other people that eventually made the rio roster so it's right. really way too early for anybody to be counting themselves out. Yeah, definitely. So, explain. You're in Anaheim. What's a day look like for you right now? A normal. Okay. Day? Well, so today I'll just tell you what I did today. Um, <laughs> we got to the gym at like 8:45 and had setting reps. 
So we have like a team room. We eat breakfast. You go get your reps before practice. We start practice at nine, warm up. Um, we do like attack school. Um, we do, well, before that we do like technique school. So I set again and we do like a arm warm up, attack school, serve and pass stuff. And then we compete for like, you know, however long it, it's on the board. So that runs probably like two and a half hours. And then today we had lift right after. So we take a protein shake and go straight to lift. And then uh, we finished lift up and we actually had a meeting today. But most of the time we have meetings on Wednesdays if we we're going to have like a team meeting. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, I was kind of stoked like, oh, yeah, I get to go to America, you know, national team it up nine to 12. I'll be done. And then realistically, you know, you get there at seven thirty eight in the morning and then you're not done till two or three p.m. Mm-hmm. So it definitely makes for a long day. And um but I think the best part about it is you just take everything one thing at a time. Yeah. So for me, if I had a hard practice, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take my 10 minute break before the lift, you know, mm-hmm. and kind of regroup mentally. But it's just cool because you're surrounded by people who just want to get better and be the best in the world. You know, even having the men's team around and like the coaching staff is just it's mm-hmm. really cool. So sometimes when you feel like, you know, I'm tired, I don't know if this is like what I want to do today, then you're kind of like inspired by, you know, quotes on the wall even right. like today I was riding the bike and I'm dying and I'm like, Whoa, you know, so That's it kind cool. of recenters you. Yeah. It's pretty, it's That's a cool. cool and I'm thing. sure it feels nice to be surrounded by people that speak English. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea. You're like, I got that joke. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm and like, like, you think I'm funny sometimes. That's so cool. <laughs> You're not looking at me weird. Yeah. So we are obviously Facebook living. Let's take some questions people are asking. We have Joe who asked, do you still talk to Coach Rose? I want to know the answer to this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, he would slap me if he was around, but I should be talking to him more. You know, he hit me up after Pan Am and was like, hey, girl, just doing what you do. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> the like, random one-off text. <laughs> yes. You know how it is. Just like the one-liners. And I'm yeah. like, I, I love you. That's Some things don't change. It's very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. So Avery asks, how long have you been playing? I've been playing per, like competitively for since I was like 11. I would play up on my sister's 13s team. Um, but I've been playing volleyball since I was like a kid, like six, seven, like my mom played co-ed and I would just be around the ball and like, you know, get to know it, but Mm -hmm. not competitively until I was like 11. That's when it started getting real serious. 11. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. That's all I see on here. This is super exciting, Micah. It's great to catch up with you. Obviously we're going to be tracking your journey with USA and in Italy next year. Super exciting. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, it was, it was cool to be on. Yep, definitely. We will catch up later. Thanks again, and thanks yeah. everybody who jo- joined us. Thanks, Watch Micah. This. Thanks, yes. everybody. Bye, Micah. Bye. Awesome stuff to catch up with her. What an exciting, exciting journey with her USA transition yeah she's so fun to watch it really doesn't matter if she's playing for Penn State USA I'm sure if I could live stream her Poland Italy matches totally would she's such a great player yeah and if anybody missed any of those matches we have all the archived matches from the Norseka Pan Am Cup on flowvolleyball.tv so be sure to head there if you missed that exciting final against the Dominican Republic 